Welcome everyone to One Player Only, the show where we chat about all the top news in the video game industry. Super original, right? I got a fair few stories to ramble about this week, so let's get right into it. Don't you love when major news that you've been waiting on for months breaks when you're editing a video and now have to patch this in afterwards? Great. The PlayStation 5 UI has finally been detailed in a brand new video released by Sony, and I think it looks pretty sick to be totally honest. We'd heard about a lot of the features already before, so there wasn't really anything there that totally surprised us or anything. But seeing it all in play and finally just getting to see how the icons look and the home menu, it looks really, really slick, I think. It looks really clean. I like the look of it a ton. It feels next gen, you know, booting up a brand new console to a brand new user interface is always exciting in my opinion. It makes your purchase just feel that extra little bit special, and I think that's a great move for Sony to have this brand new UI that makes the entire console feel really next gen as opposed to Xbox, they're largely keeping the same UI from the Xbox One, so that would in my opinion make that purchase a bit less exciting, but yeah, whatever. It seems like the PlayStation 5 UI is really focusing on speed. There are so many features we've seen that are able to be pinned to the screen while you're playing the game, so nothing's being intrusive. Notifications and, and requests to join a party, for example, now just come up and never take you away from the game. At the start of the video as they launch right into the first menu once they log in, my immediate thought was, damn, this, this doesn't look great, to be totally honest. There's what they called a bunch of cards there, and those have a whole new list of features, like you can see the news tab. That shit's definitely not up my alley, but yeah, the way that was laid out there, that news tab right up front and the cards along the row, I don't know. It wasn't a great first impression, but it became clear that that wasn't actually the home screen they'd booted up right into from a suspended state into Sackboy A Big Adventure, and they called this menu here the control panel. And basically this is just the equivalent of the quick menu on PS4 that you can always pull up while you're in the middle of a game at any time, and that's where you can change settings on the fly and look at things specific to your games like your trophies, but now you can do a bunch of new stuff there. A bunch of really cool stuff. You can launch right into specific levels in the game, see your pro progress on specific levels, and the same will apply I assume in other games with being able to just go straight into the multiplayer mode for example, not have to go back to the main menu. We saw the trophy progress finally is a thing on PlayStation where you can see your progress to individual trophies. You can pull up video guides, have how to's on how to get through certain levels in a game or certain sections or unlock certain trophies or whatever. I don't know if I'll be using that yet, I think I'll just have to get used to it, I'll give it a go, and just see what kinds of videos it pulls up, you know what I mean? Is that going to be like YouTube channels? Is it going to pull up? Is it going to let me choose who I want to watch or, or what guide I want to see specifically? Or is it just going to pull up some generic Sony video? I don't know how that would work exactly. But we can see the in-game tips and all those features are exclusive to PlayStation Plus subscribers, so another benefit there. It might be handy just to not have to look up shit on your phone or your computer or whatever next to you so everything's entirely still in the experience you're not taking yourself away from the game but yeah i don't know it remains to be seen how interesting i really find that stuff once we got into the actual real home menu and you saw the row of games you know that stuff looks pretty similar to ps4 each game has its own little menu with information and and stuff like that for it that side of things just looked like ps4 modernized, super upgraded since 2013, and I'm all about that, because I love the core functionality of the PS4's UI, it's just that I don't think it looks super modern these days. The only other major takeaway, I think, was the fact that they mentioned the PlayStation Store, which is in the same spot it normally is on the home menu. Um, it's no longer like a separate application you have to load. For myself personally, on my base PS4, the friggin' PlayStation Store takes 50 years to load, but now it's not a separate application, you can pull it up right then and there, in the home menu itself, if that makes sense. So that'll definitely save a lot of time there. Again, coming back to the whole speed thing, which is great. First hand for the first time in this, we also saw another game being suspended and resumed real quick. So we got to see just how fast loading times are on PS5 to boot up a game. We've heard about how extraordinary load times are on this console. And yeah, it was definitely an improvement. It seemed like Sackboy, which is the main game they had open, never was closed. So you can have multiple games suspended like on Xbox Series X, presumably. So that's really cool. So, you know, there wasn't a whole lot to take away from the PS5 UI, I'm just glad that we got this out of the way, we've finally seen it. You know, normally we would have seen this thing months ago if we were in any other situation, but it's just another small thing on the road to getting excited for the console, so I'm glad we've finally seen it now, it looks really cool. Alright, back to past me. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is this Mass Effect Trilogy remaster for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, 
This thing, dude, it's been leaked so many goddamn times, so many listings. I want to say genuinely, what, like, four or five times this game's been leaked now. Uh, it's been leaked again. It's got the Mass Effect Legendary Edition title because it's been rated in Korea. Look, any doubt that this thing isn't happening, that this thing isn't real, has to be out the window at this point. It's been leaked by retailers, by rating boards, and, and everyone under the sun has leaked this game at this point. So it's 100% coming. When the hell will it be announced? Well, I mean, I'm not a Mass Effect fan personally. I've not had the chance to play the Mass Effect trilogy yet, which is why I'm personally excited for this remastered trilogy. I want to delve into those RPGs because, you know, they are heralded as Bioware's best work as some of the best games on the previous generation of consoles. So I definitely want to check them out. And I know that N7 is a significant thing in the Mass Effect universe. So... Uh, EA does N7 Day, November 7th every year, where they, I don't know, announce some weird bullshit every year, probably. So, this is a fair guess as to when this trilogy will be formally announced, finally. So, you know, mark your calendars, November 7th, we'll probably get that reveal then. I don't actually know what, is N7, it's like, is that the main character's number? Dude, I don't know anything about Mass Effect. This is why, that's why that trilogy is a must-play for me. I'm excited for it anyway. Next up, I was trying to figure out exactly how and in, in what priority I wanted to order the stories, but this is a really interesting one, I think. So GameStop in the US has announced a deal with Microsoft, and that deal is going to see GameStop profit from any customer that GameStop essentially brings into the Xbox ecosystem, whether through selling Game Pass subscriptions, Game Pass Ultimate subscriptions, and then you'd presume that would also carry over to Xbox Live Gold subscriptions and the like. Basically, every time that GameStop brings in a new customer for Microsoft uh, by selling one of their services, one of their subscriptions, then GameStop is going to profit from that. It's likely a small percentage, you know, maybe 10% of the total value or something like that. But why is this deal interesting? You know, why would Microsoft just start handing over extra cash to GameStop, which is, you know, clearly a dying retailer at this point. You know, the proof's in the pudding on that one. Well, I think it's really interesting, especially heading into next gen, because this is 100% going to mean that GameStop is going to be putting a lot of their marketing focus, I would presume, in their stores, prioritizing Xbox and Xbox consoles for this very reason. They're going to make some sweet, sweet dough off of it, and Lord knows GameStop needs some sweet dough these days, dude. Their, their financials aren't great. So this is just another, I think, kind of strategic play by Microsoft that is probably going under the radar a little bit just because it's not another big announcement. When they purchased Bethesda a few weeks ago, that blew the minds of many. I don't think this is going to do that. But nonetheless, Microsoft still sees value in the retail space and sees that as an important place for their games, for their consoles to be sold naturally. It's definitely, I think, a dying field. I think that's hard to deny. And we see digital sales increasing month by month, every single year. But right now, you know, physical games are still important and Microsoft want to try and corner that market over Sony by this move. So, you know, cool. I wonder if this will pay off for them well. This is something that we'll likely forget about. It'll likely be impossible for us to know for sure just how well this works out for either side, but it's definitely something to note, I think, when you're comparing Microsoft and Sony strategies, especially. It'll also, I think, act as a bit of a, I don't know, a nice gesture, I suppose, from Microsoft to GameStop. Microsoft this gen, and Sony's doing obviously the same with their digital PS5, both of the main console manufacturers are selling digital-only consoles. So, you know, that isn't the greatest thing for GameStop in the world, to be selling to their customers a console where it is then physically impossible for that customer who purchases either an Xbox Series S or a PS5 Digital Edition to then ever come back to GameStop to buy a physical game ever again. You know, and that's obviously where the vast majority of their profit is made. You know, that's an inevitable reality, I think, of the console space of video games in general. But obviously for GameStop, for the execs there, it's not something that they want to come to terms with too quickly, I don't think. So Microsoft doing this, giving them an extra dough, bit of an incentive to sell Game Pass and their services. You know, it could be seen as a bit of a positive gesture on their part before, of course, GameStop's inevitable demise likely within the next, I don't know, God, it could be pretty soon, honestly, within the next five years, ten years at most, probably. In other news, the initiative, which is Microsoft's brand new, they started this studio from scratch a couple of years ago, first-party studio over there in Santa Monica in California, 
This studio has been described as a quadruple A studio, one of the biggest game developers at their Microsoft is apparently giving this brand new team all of their backing. And we've got no idea what they're making. We've heard interviews and, and lots of things said about this team, but we've got no idea what they're working on quite yet. Obviously, whatever it is will be an Xbox exclusive title. But the studio has gained two new team members, both formerly from Naughty Dog. And obviously Naughty Dog, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many people out there, obviously being the premier video game studio in the industry, you know, transferring them over to the initiative them being picked up by Microsoft and the initiative is a big get, and I think that does speak to hopefully what the initiative is making is something really, really special, something really big to be excited for, because that's something that Xbox needs right now. You know, they've got Game Pass, they've got great services, I love their consoles, I love everything they're doing over there from a pure services business perspective for their consumers, but at the same time, what games do they have that are of massive value, you know what I mean? They've got cool exclusives, you know, everyone likes Halo, everyone likes Gears, and you know, the Bethesda deal's huge and all that, but we haven't seen a brand new, huge IP from them that's really going to blow us away in the same way that Sony has continued to do. A huge AAA single player banger, we just haven't seen it from them in a long time, and I hope the initiative is working on that. There's been a lot of speculation that they're actually working on some sort of revival of an old franchise, like Perfect Dark has been thrown around a lot. I don't know, man. I'm personally not interested in seeing that. I hope what I see, if it if it is something like that, is really cool, and it does blow me away. That's certainly possible. But just on paper, I don't want to see what is being touted as the biggest video game developer out there these days, you know, getting all these amazing developers to come and join the team just to make a revival of an old franchise, you know what I mean? I want to see a brand new IP from these guys. But Whatever they're making, we're probably going to find out sooner rather than later at this point, maybe in the next year or two. And whatever it is, I hope it's worth getting excited over at the time anyway. PS4 firmware update 8.0 has been released, and it comes with brand new exciting features for the PlayStation 4. Nah, not really, sorry. Yeah, it's just, you know, I think it's fair to expect these kind of updates rolling out for the consoles as we prepare for PS5, Sony just preparing their back end of their systems and their, and their software and their OS to become compatible with PS5 when it launches, so it's basically an update like that. They've done that with their remote play apps as well. They've all been updated to support PS5 at launch, so hip hip hooray. But a huge oversight, potentially? A huge issue that's kind of risen out of this update is the fact that now on PS4, and this is bewildering when I saw this, you can now only create parties with your friends, you know, party chat on PS4. You can now only do this through message groups for some unknown reason, for some bewildering reason. It's bloody insane. So on PS4, you know, you've got your messaging groups. You can create groups of, I don't know, dude, I don't use the friggin' messaging feature on PS4. Who the hell does? So you can create groups of friends to message and shit. And that is now apparently the only way you can start a party. You can go into your messaging group. I still don't know. <laughs> do people use that? I don't know. But uh, you can go in there and start a party call chat thing right from there, which is unbelievable. They seem to have removed the basic functionality of just going to your friends list and adding them to a party, therefore starting a party chat. And then obviously the way it always worked was super snappy with the quick menu on PS4, just being able to go to your friend, add them to the party, done. Why the hell is this happening, dude? I've got... No idea. I hope we get a bit more insight into this over the coming weeks as to, you know, hopefully a goddamn fix to this terrible issue. And also, just why? Why remove some really basic UX functionality from the console? It's completely bizarre. But anyway, hope to see it fixed very soon. In more developer news, Rockstar Dundee has been formed, which is crazy. A brand new Rockstar studio. Dude, Rockstar has been expanding quite a bit over the last few years. Anyway, Take-Two has purchased a developer called Ruffian Games. I think you could, it might be Rufian Games. I don't know how you say it or whatever. But these guys apparently developed Crackdown 2, which I definitely have never played. Um, they're located in Scotland, which is really interesting because, of course, one of Rockstar's main teams, Rockstar North, that is the team primarily responsible for the GTA franchise, obviously a huge player in Red Dead Redemption 2 as well, 
That studio was also located in Scotland, so Rockstar expanding again, that's pretty cool. You know, I think Rockstar from memory has a team in India as well, and obviously they have the team in San Diego. They're all over the map, all over the world, Rockstar. Um, they've got a shitload of employees, and to see them get more employees, you know, cool. I guess this means good things for us in the future, hopefully. You know, uh, if this was just another few hundred people that they're going to hire to continue supporting GTA Online and Red Dead Online with new content, oh god, that, that, that would suck, considering the lack of Rockstar single player games these days. We're basically at the point where we're getting one a generation, it seems like, which is a shame. But, you know, you presume GTA 6 is in development. There have been rumours about Bully 2, if that's happening or not. It's unclear what Rockstar's next big game will be. But, you know, Rockstar manning up. It's always a good sign. Hopefully it means that we get bigger, more impressive games from them, if that's even possible, because they create some of the coolest shit out there. So, yeah. Moving on, Level 5, which is the Japanese developer responsible for the Professor Layton series, uh, Yo-Kai Watch on 3DS, if you give a shit about that, and Nino Kuni, which is obviously a well-regarded PlayStation franchise JRPG series, which has the, uh, the original game and the sequel, that is. They are shutting down production, their studios in North America, which is honestly kind of weird. But apparently, developers at the studios had seen this coming, the developer's branch outside of Japan was apparently responsible seemingly for localizing its games. It was a quite a small team. It seems that around 20 or so employees were affected by this. And of course, I hope everything goes well for their futures naturally. But it did seem to be quite a small operation, mainly localizing the games from the Japanese team. So, you know, while the main crew over there in Japan is developing Nino Kuni and the like, uh, it seems like the North American team was in charge for translation and, and localizing and all that stuff. What remains unclear is if any more Level 5 games will then subsequently be released in the West. Will we be getting... I think there's a Yokai Watch sequel currently out in Japan right now developed by them that hasn't been translated yet, I think. You know, Level 5 games, you know, they're no joke, dude. Like, Nino Kuni is definitely a franchise is well regarded. I've heard of it. Yokai Watch, you know, it, Professor Layton, of course, these are games and series that everyone's heard of. They are quite prominent. They're not some tiny little studio that no one's ever heard of. So the prospect of them not releasing games in English markets anymore seems crazy to me. I don't know. I, I don't really see that happening. But the way in which those games were localized previously seems to have been shut down, eliminated. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that work, that localization work, ends up just getting outsourced to other developers, other studios, as opposed to Level 5 doing it themselves. That way we still end up getting these games overseas. Hopefully this isn't the end for Nino Kuni and all that over here. Spider-Man Miles Morales is one of my most anticipated games of this year, and we got some brand new information about the game, some new screenshots, because it is Game Informer's next cover story, and that of course means we get some juicy, juicy details. And they've released some screenshots, so we're going to be getting more details in the months to come, I suppose. But these screenshots, man, I've taken a look at them. They're pretty sick. They're pretty sick. I don't know. We've seen not a whole lot about the game. We've seen a demo and a quick trailer. I think expectations have been kind of set. I don't want to say low, but they've been set at a place that is people understand and I think expect a sort of smaller experience from this, a Lost Legacy DLC style experience from Miles Morales. That is certainly where my expectations have been set and I'm still super excited for it, but seeing these screenshots kind of reminded me again of why I'm so excited for this and why I love Spider-Man so much on PS4. It was like I'd almost forgotten. I was like, yeah, dude, I'm going to play that game when it comes out. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. But seeing this, they released also a bit of boss fight footage. I haven't watched that. I don't want to get too in depth on watching everything before the game comes out. But seeing some of that stuff, I'm like, hell yeah, dude, this is reminding me of what's so freaking cool about these games, and this is definitely going to be one of my favorite games of the year, no doubt. Xbox 360 is getting free cloud saves ahead of the Xbox Series X and S launch. This is something I haven't heard of any games console manufacturer doing before, but I think it's really cool. You know, the, the free cloud saves feature, excuse me, just the, the cloud saves feature of being able to upload your game saves to the cloud on both Xbox and PlayStation are locked behind their subscription services. So traditionally on Xbox, you have to be an Xbox Live Gold member to be able to access that feature. Meaning if you want to use your Xbox 
one saves on your Series X that you'd have to have Xbox Live Gold naturally, but Microsoft is opening up that feature to 360 owners, so that means Xbox 360 players who maybe skip this generation are now being incentivized to upgrade to Series X by having all of their backwards compatible Xbox 360 games, because yes, keep in mind, Series X and X play 360 games, all of their saves will carry over to Series X free of charge. You know, this is a smart move. I highly doubt Microsoft is going to lose out on a lot of subscription money from doing this. And who knows, they'll probably sell a few more consoles just by doing this. So good for them. Oh, okay, what the hell else we got? We got the most basic story of all time. You ready for this? Naughty Dog has confirmed on Twitter that all of their games, all of their games, play on PS5. Thanks, Naughty Dog. <laughs> I don't know why they felt the need to announce this. I mainly just want to mention this because I thought it was hilarious that they announced this. They put out a tweet that was like a like they thought it was a big deal or something. It's like, we're proud to announce that our games will be playable on PS5. It's like, Naughty Dog, we know, we know this. Your games are backwards compatible. All Every single Naughty Dog game I do believe, including, you know, obviously because they remastered the, the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, all the Jack and Daxter games are playable on PS4. All the Uncharted games, obviously The Last of Us Parts 1 and 2, every game they've ever made is playable on PS4. And if it's playable on PS4, it's playable on PS5. So, cheers for that anyway. Alright, thanks for watching, one player only, for this week. I've got no idea what I'm doing, at all. That was kind of exhausting, having to read all that out by myself, to be totally honest. But hopefully you found a smidge of enjoyment in it. Let me know in the comments down below, if you care, if you like it. I highly doubt it, but that's fine. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, check out all my social media in the description down below. That'd be much appreciated. This has been Sir Kaz. Farewell.